This episode was made in two language versions. Ten podcast powstał w dwóch wersjach językowych. Right now you are listening to the English one. Teraz słuchasz go po angielsku. If you want to switch the language to Polish, choose the previous episode from the list. Jeżeli chcesz zmienić język na polski, wybierz poprzedni odcinek z listy. There was this guy that it was it was really known as it was really popular graffiti artist and he used to sleep in the train station like he was an homeless guy made in this graffiti and uh, uh, we we discovered he was sleeping in that train station and he went mad uh, because we were stealing his uh, graffiti <laughs> station and basically he came with Mickey Mouse ears but not only ears this hat Looks like devil worshippers. Mm, would Jean Michel Basquiat feel good on a pink background? Mm, okay, it's like May the Force with you. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, ragazzi, ciao, sono Gabriele. Non perdetevi il podcast, sarò ospite prossimamente su questo canale. Ciao, ciao ragazzi. <laughs> ciao. Uh, did I did I end it? <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. This podcast was made with the help of my daughter Olivia, who translated this episode. Thank you, Olivia, very much. Family power. Who put Basquiat in the pink background? Can painting graffiti end with getting beaten up with a machete? And whose eye looks at us from Gabriel Lateana's paintings? I will tell you it all in a moment. My name is Agnieszka Kias and I'm the art critic. And you are listening to 79th episode of Dawno Temu w Sztuce podcast. Everything you want to know about art, but without boredom. <laughs> Good morning or evening. I greet you warmly, my dear listener, and I greet you like that because I don't know when you are listening to this podcast. When Jean-Michel Basquiat and Andy Warhol were promoting the exhibition, then its main motive was box. And one of the posters, Andy, throws a punch at Basquiat's jaw. And exactly this moment, this characteristic bank, was captured by my guest Gabriel Lateana on his painting. So pack your luggage because it's going to be another international episode of Dawno Temu w Sztuce podcast. I'm taking you again to Italy. I said again because we were there before with Avasenna. You can find a link to this interview in the description. It's episode 75. Now we are visiting Gabriel's studio. Gabriel is a painter and even if he paints on the canvas, it wasn't always like that. Buongiorno Gabriel, welcome to my podcast. I hope that I said your surname correctly. Uh, yeah, yeah, you spelled it right. It was, uh, <laughs> it was correct. <laughs> it was uh, better than most of uh, Italian people that don't know my surname sometimes. They... They made mistakes too, so it's fine. I'm used to it. I know that there is an interesting story behind this surname. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, sure. This is a, a surname that comes from the south of Italy, where the, there is this small village called Teana. And my ancestor, like 300, 400 years ago, used to live there. And our surname came from that village. It is transmitted in the family genealogic tree. Wow, the surname passing from generation to generation, but to have your own village, that's impressive. All right, Gabriel, um, would Jean-Michel Basquiat feel good on a pink background? Uh, I hope he's, uh, he's fine with my painting. We'll discover at the end of my life if he was fine or not, but I, I hope so. He was like the biggest inspiration I had since I started painting. And I transmitted my kind of way to think of painting with this one. 
because I wanted to represent reality with different uh, perspective, uh, different colors, uh, and uh, normally I do it from uh, uh, no no scratch. Basically, I just start painting uh, from what I see, and then it comes from. This I used as a reference, uh, the image of Basquiat and uh, Andy Warhol fighting each other, because I wanted to give uh, enough credit for that, but just also transmit a message, because I, I thought it was uh, cool to represent that Basquiat basically won the critics with the hand that kicks him in the face and uh, became a king. Here I wanted to add that Jean-Michel Basquiat is a young rebel painter, Afro-American painter, from New York. He won the art award. Basquiat started as street artist. He was writing controversial and funny texts with sprays on the walls. He also painted there a crown symbol. This crown is visible on your painting as well. I saw it on few of your works. Um, I understand it is a tribute for basket. Yeah, it's like the, um, defeating all the racism that was back then because it was the first Afro-American uh, artist uh, became the biggest one. <clears throat> so I wanted to represent him like a king who made it through the dirt. He fought with his, with his hands in the order to become who became. So, yeah, it was my, uh, let's say, my crown uh, for him uh, made in the same way he, he used to paint it. Uh, also because we started in the same way. We started painting from the walls illegally and as graffiti. And after that, we, we continue on the canvas. I see a lot of similarities between me and him. From this point of view, I don't want to sound like I, I'm trying to be Basquiat, I'm, I'm trying to be Gabriele. Nice, the connection of the artistic souls. But let's jump onto the wall. Do you have any memories for this time? I suppose if that wasn't fully legal, then crazy stuff had to happen. Yeah, we cannot really talk that much. I will try to find a story that doesn't imply I will be arrested. <laughs> but sometimes police chased us with... Uh, sometimes they shoot, I think, or something. I, I heard a shot in the night. So, but I don't know. I don't think they were shooting at us. They were just alarming us just to make us run. But we, we, didn't, we didn't know at the time. <laughs> But mostly it was like more uh, the, the beauty of the graffiti was the culture around that there was like meeting with a lot of gems, a lot of people painting uh, and like creating a community for real that now has been lost, I think, because with the social network and everything, it's difficult to people now to, even if it's easier, it's more difficult to meet and do these kind of things. From what I see, young people are not really interested in doing it. So I'm not sure, but there has been some stories, like, for example, there was a, a time we went to do the train and there was this guy that it was, it was really known as, it was really popular graffiti artist and he used to sleep in the train station, like he was an homeless guy made in this graffiti and uh, uh, we, we discovered he was sleeping in that train station and he went mad. Uh, because we were stealing his uh, graffiti station <laughs> and basically he came with uh, against us with the machete oh, and he wanted to to kill us because it was so we ran away we were just kids we were like 14 years old 15 years old so i was like kind of scared uh, of the situation so we ran away and we started understanding that it wasn't really the safest uh, option to do art but we were young uh, and crazy so we continue <laughs> so if these are the safer stories then i can't imagine the serious ones yeah well i mean like these one are the one with no police involved so it's safe now to say 
the one with police is the one that I prefer to keep by myself. When, when we meet, we will tell about it. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> hope so. That's great. I'm imagining this train station, the guy with the machete and the sound of the bullets flying above the heads, the huge rebellion. But coming back to the paintings, because at some time you had to switch from the big high walls to the canvas. Yeah, it's... It's like a world full of... I mean, what was bringing us there to do graffiti was like the adrenaline. The thing was that we wanted to let the people know our name, at least our alias graffiti name. Uh, I think it was also a beautiful world because uh, aside of this kind of situation that were few of them have been, it's not always like that, but... There was all this situation where you can meet people and uh, create a cohesive uh, space of art that I think now, especially in Milan, I don't know in other city, but in Milan has been lost in the last year. Like a lot of uh, walls that were uh, available for graffiti have been uh, removed and now guys don't have even the, the space where to paint. So that's why I, I, I lost my connection also with this world because there's no chance that you can do anything. So I prefer do it on the canvas. The canvas is safer, right? Nobody will paint over your work, but isn't it limiting you? Mm, I used to buy when I was younger also canvas, but it was too small and I didn't know how to stay inside that. One, I remember in 2018, I was really at a low moment of my life and I found this old canvas I bought like 10 years earlier. I said, okay, let's, let's try again. It was like 10 years that I didn't paint, I didn't draw anything. It was like completely black, blackout. I started doing on the canvas, I started following the flow, came out like um, something that now I will think it's trash because it's it's been like... A, 10, uh, 10, it's almost five years ago, and I've changed many details. But I started following my necessity to paint, and after that I, w- I was absorbed, and I was able to fit in the small canvas in the beginning. Then my, my need to expand more uh, made me pass on a bigger canvas. Now I paint like canvas that are big as, uh, as big as the wall I used to paint, so... I, I made this transition during the four years I started painting again. So it wasn't really easy at the beginning, but I had to adapt. Especially because I started painting uh, like the year earlier than uh, COVID start, so that I couldn't go out in any case. So I had to do it on the canvas only. Okay, the canvas saved you. So impressive. But I'm interested about the story of your first oil painting. Was that the one at which you tried to write your name over and over and over and over? <laughs> no, that one was like uh, the only paint. Uh, that painting is called Obsession. It's like my first painting ever. Like I did it in 2009. And it's really small canvas. Like it's like 24, 18 uh, After that, I stopped completely for like 10 years almost. And the first painting, I can send you a picture. It was just a representation of an African mask, like really easy with a really easy pattern color. And it was like really just the gesture in order to make myself relax again, just put out all the poison I had at the moment so I started like the therapy and then uh, it became what it became because uh, I didn't expect also this I started as a necessity and then I was completely absorbed in the bubble and after that I became I arrived where I am now which is not so much at the moment but it will be I hope so Mm. Sometimes we think that everything is bad and won't be better than abracadabra art games and life is colorful again. A lot of artists had a bad moments in their life. For example, Pablo Picasso had the whole blue period. This color also appears in your art. In Picasso's case, he had a huge depression and was poor at that time. 
If you don't know, in Poland there is a painter, Andrzej Wróblewski. Um, I send you a few of his paintings and I will post it on my Instagram. He painted that people with blue. He was a victim of shooting on the streets. That's because he was a child at the time of war. His paintings have a strong message. For example, we see a kid who hugs a blue. It means that mother or vice versa. We see the mother who holds in her arms blue dead baby. Does blue color is also as important in your paintings? What does blue mean? for you yeah i saw the the painting of the artist you sent me and i see this similar similarity also is is a like it's really um, expressive of the dead the people because you can see that even though you don't know the story you understand there's something like that i tend to change the colors like of my of the person uh, in the painting just because i want to change the the perspective of the reality so i don't want to like represent you me and her in uh, pink colors i want to say, represent me in blue you in uh, in purple and her in uh, yellow because i want to change and give more color to this world because this world is gray uh, so i want to change this situation plus uh, i remember that uh, i used to do in the beginning this uh, duality of uh, the woman should be painted in blue and the man should be painted in pink uh, in order to go against the society law that tell you that uh, it has to be boys blue and girls pink so i wanted to i also did like a triptych of adam and eve like that where adam is uh, in pink and uh, eve is in uh, blue I think I had my, my period, but I don't, returning to the question, I don't think it was because of my depression, the color blue. It was like uh, probably my uh, my instinct made it. Even though now I'm doing like painting with a lot of colors inside, you will always see blue and, uh, and pink inside because it was like the, the first color I started using and I, I liked the way I used that color and became like my trademark uh, similar to the eye. If you are talking about the eye, I know that you use it as your signature. But why? Why did you start to sing your works in such a specific way? Yeah, because uh, uh, since where I started uh, painting, I remember I had this idea that I wanted to create something more like street art or graffiti or whatever it was like a, a, a childish style with uh, um, something more realistic because uh, I wanted to present the reality in my way, so as I want to see it, uh, and uh, the eye was the first step. Uh, I always wanted to paint like realistic eyes. I never mm, painted by myself completely. Then I, one day I decided to start. Okay, let's put these two Gabriels together. One who used to write his name over and over on the Canva, while screaming into the whole world, and then this name changed into only the eye. I means to look, to see. Is it some kind of dialogue with a veer? Is there any hidden meaning? Yeah, it's uh, interesting, the point of view, because I never thought about, like... Uh... I changed um, my perspective, like I wanted to paint uh, obsessively uh, everything and my name uh, was like repeatedly infinite time, uh, while now I barely write my name. I started again to sign my paintings because galleries told me that it's necessary to, to sign it for the customers sometimes. Also, even though my paintings are not really minimalistic because there is a lot of happenings, uh, like a lot of colors, a lot of images, but I wanted to make sure that some characteristics of the paintings will be like my recognition. You see that eye, you see the nose made in that, in that way, and you know it's me. And I don't have to write my name on purpose to make you understand it's me. For me, uh, why the eye and why only one eye? Because uh, I have always been uh, this uh, unbalanced 
for me it's like there is one side that has all so the eye is uh, present and the other side is like really more uh, impulsive more uh, heart less than brain uh, so basically i left it empty and the eye is because for me like uh, you know the the, the, the phrase uh, uh, eyes are the mirror for the soul so basically with the eyes you can tell a story without even talking like you can understand uh, something is good or not uh, something's wrong with the person just looking in the eye in fact sometimes people don't understand think that there is a photo and it's not like a real paint when i tell no i paint it and they say oh, okay that's really good and, Oh, I really like that. I are the mirror of the soul. We also have this phrase in Polish. Let's focus on the specifics, but that I mean the Mickey Mouse painting, which looks more like a monster. We see a character which has a pink skin, white blue nose, big lips, piercing in the ears, and where the eye should be, we see the screaming mouth. On his head there is a Disneyland hat with Mickey Mouse ears, but not only ears. This hat looks like it has a face. It looks like it's trying to swallow the Mickey's head. Even with this optimistic color, like for example vivid green, by the way, the whole painting is really colorful, you can see it on my Instagram, I invite you to check Gabriel's Instagram as well, link in the description. Even with these vivid colors, this painting is really drastic. This painting is called uh, Coming Out the Shell. As you said, the top part, the yellow one, is like face because it's like this. Uh, this is a young guy, basically just past the childhood. That's why Mickey Mouse. That's why the big ears from uh, Mickey Mouse. Everyone when he was little used to like be uh, fasc fascinated by Mickey Mouse, all the cartoons, and I wanted to make a reference to my childhood. And basically, this is uh, me surpassing that part, the, the phase. And becoming like a, a more adult person or well at least a, a, a teenager let's say there is only one eye because i'm like not really unbalanced so the other eye is represented as a mouth screaming because as i told you eyes can tell you more about the person and the status of the person so you can understand that this this is a kid that became almost adult and needs to scream and needs to throw out the negativity in his life and that's why his eyes are screaming i wanted to do this uh, duality with the mouth on the high side that's why also the the eye is uh, kind of sad let's say because uh, no one is happy to grow up that's kind of representation that of the lost childhood but in a in not in a dramatic way just in the circle of life mm -hmm. the natural order of things um, but what's going on on this whole series of portraits which you had sent me on them we see men with horns on their heads are they demons devils or some other mythical creatures yeah normally people think that i'm devil worshiper so i paint devil with the horns and everything but it's not like that. It's just like this series is called Personalities. And I made it uh, during a phase of my life where I was like really trying to figure it out what I wanted, what I was. Uh, I was not really in a good mood too. I was <clears throat> during COVID. It was during the probably the second lockdown we had in Italy. So I didn't know what to want. Uh, but. I knew that painting was growing really as a thing. I was trying to understand what to do. Here, basically, all the different things and thoughts that I have at the moment made me create this uh, triptych of three person, which basically should be me, because normally my paintings are auto-referential. It's my representation of me. But in this case, it was like a, a more uh, a, a wider subject because uh, I wanted to represent all the different aspects of personality that every one of us has. But depending on how he lives, uh, it will change. Like in this case, there is a man with the horns 
but this is not like the devil is just like the representation of our animal side that we have to push down in order to live in a society so that's why we don't act like animals but we have the animal instinct we have just to push it down in order to don't make it come out and make damages but there is also the part where there is this guy with the one in the pink one uh, is the one with the smile uh, like a clown. It's a fake smile uh, that he had to paint on his face in order to go on on the society uh, because society asked you to do like that. And there is the more uh, realistic side like the nose uh, and the eye uh, where uh, it's like more rational. Uh, there is rationality in that side and the more the deeper part which is for me the eye on the white side with the yeah with the tears which is like how he's feeling in that moment but nobody can understand because it's focused on the other part that are more in the, on the surface so you can see more that than the other one and this is like different side of the personality put on the different canvas and uh, also in the yellow one there is the animal side there is the more rationality the less rationality and the way the people the person feel and also in the blue one you can see the animal side is coming out stronger because it depends on the phase of a life of the person so if the person in that moment feels a certain type of way it will act uh, with that part of personality if it's uh, on the other side on the more rational part of his life he will act like a rational rational person but everyone has all these characteristics even though we try to hide them because we don't want to people see our true nature probably i wanted to make it clear that everyone has issue everyone can come out well sometimes you have to balance between these two things i was sorry i my i am like close to my Mm, a statue like uh, I, I I'm starting uh, creating with my like uh, I don't know how to say uh, clay yeah so I was it was all falling down so I was trying not to make noises and trying to <laughs> <laughs> no no I don't want your sculpture to fall down mm, what are you creating is it clay <laughs> Yeah, it's not like I'm just starting. I just want, I'm curious to experiment. Uh, I have many projects I'm starting to do. So now it's just like my second time trying to sculpt uh, clays. I'm trying to be good at it, but it's not really easy. So I'm trying by myself. So I was just trying and uh, now I put it on the wrong spot and it was falling down. That's why... So if we are talking about sculptures, it reminded me about one of your paintings. On a yellow background, there is a blue woman with elongated face and elongated neck. I automatically thought about Modigliani. He was also painting and sculpting these characteristic long faces. Is it a good track? Yeah, of course, like Modigliani is one of the other. I have three bigger painters that are like my biggest inspiration. It's uh, Basquiat, we already said. Modigliani is another one and uh, Francis Bacon is the other one. So I enjoy everything about Modigliani, his story, his background. But especially I wanted to, I love, what I loved from him was like his way of representing reality was different from the other. He used to do this long neck, this woman without the eyes, long um, hands and everything. Yes, that's why I find some similarity in him with my kind of uh, perspective of uh, reality. And that's why, yeah, the, exactly that painting you said is called Mamer and it's uh, my mother. And I wanted to do it in a way that Modigliani used to do it, but not with the color you used to do it. I used to do it. I did it in, with my colors, with my perspective. It was a present for my mother. I gave it to her, so she has it now. I would say it's like um, an homage to Modigliani in itself. Like Basquiat, it's an homage to Basquiat. Uh, this one is an homage to Modigliani. I wanted to pay homage to my mentor. And as another painting I've done, uh, which is called Nightmare, is an homage to Francis Bacon. These are the three figures that 
inspired me the most to, to do painting. So yeah, of course there is the influential and there is also the reference to them. It's like a tribute to them. Yeah, Modigliani is also a great example of a rebel, same as Caravaggio. Exactly. I'm talking about these painters because they are one of the greatest artists in the world. They are also from Italy, so yeah. they got good genes. And <laughs> how much do Italians know about art history? Do people know who these uh, artists were? Do they know who Caravaggio, Modigliani or Da Vinci were? Do you talk over a beer or don't know over a glass of wine don't know what you are drinking uh, and talk about art or not mm, I, I think uh, uh, like people uh, older than me are more aware of the like say let's say of this uh, heritage we had of this uh, fortune we have uh, to sit uh, in front of many of these painting and that many of these painters or not painters also artists like sculptures mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Bernini for example uh, all these uh, big uh, artists were Italian so we are lucky to, to have it but only people uh, let's say a little bit older uh, than my age are aware of it most of the time I'm not saying everyone now people have forgotten this. It's like we, we say, well, yeah, we have it, so it's not really that big deal, but yeah, it is. Unfortunately, on the other side, uh, what I see that the people that love uh, all these uh, old masters are not really into the contemporary art, or well, except the big names are uh, going now, like Catalan, for example. Aside of them, People don't consider contemporary art anymore. From what I saw in my small career until now, people don't really are into my art or this kind of art. It's more like old master art only. All the painters that have died already, and yeah, we we know they are famous, etc. But maybe you should try to focus on something more contemporary because like time has changed and. You cannot always, uh, you have to pay homage, you have to enjoy their painting, but there is more aside that. And it's sad because uh, from what I see um, at uh, foreign, in foreign countries, like for example Poland, for example South Africa, Brazil, uh, Japan, uh, uh, Middle East in general, USA are really into this kind of art and uh, for example they're really into also Italian art, like Italian is really has a big reputation there because of the old masters. Mm -hmm. In Italy we miss that step, so basically we let the artists go away and then when they become famous uh, in other country they come back and they accept it. It's a snob mentality I think and I hope they will lose uh, this kind of uh, view. But at the moment now, for example, I will do only another show in Italy. And after that, I will move to all around the world in order to, to establish my name. But in Italy, there is not really future, especially collectors don't want to pay for uh, art. They, they want to pay less. Young people are into my art, but they don't have the money. I can understand. I don't have the money for buying a paint. So it's a cycle that... Uh, it's a dog that bites its tail and it goes around. So I hope these things change, but yeah, we are... Uh, older people, like from my age on, are aware of the past, but are unaware of the uh, contemporary. Younger people are not really into art. L lots of young people are not interested in it. And it's bad because... I mean, we are Italy. Italy is known for only the past uh, imper uh, the Roman, uh, the ancient Roman, uh, the Renaissance, uh, all these are big eras, but now it's not really into the younger generation. So where do you plan to direct your artistic activity? What are your plans? Okay, yeah, I can tell you a little bit, but I'm scaramantic due to this COVID situation, so I won't say it loud uh, until it's confirmed. I mean, all shows are confirmed or in the making, 
but due to this COVID situation, uh, I don't know <laughs> until the last day, you don't know. But yeah, next uh, month I will be in uh, Innsbruck, Austria. I will be there with two paintings. Then I will be in um, my last show in Italy. Then after that, I will be in uh, Istanbul. Then after Turkey, uh, by the end of the year, I will be there like for exposed for six or seven months. Depends on the space. And then uh, on uh, the beginning of the next year, probably February, I will be in Paris. And I have also in 2023 a show that has to be confirmed in New York. For the moment, this is my, my plan. Ho, 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 ho. For me, there is one thing missing in this plan. It's Poland. I hope you visit us someday and to prepare you for this moment now it's time to teach you one very important sentence in Polish. Are you ready? I, I know because I saw the Anna podcast so I already knew there was this moment. <laughs> But if you were preparing for this moment then forget it because this sentence It's a bit different. No, I didn't, I didn't even ask because I was on the on holiday. So I said, okay, if they ask, I will do it. I will try. <laughs> okay, let's begin. Drodzy słuchacze podcastu. Drodzy? Drodzy. Drodzy. No, I, I forget the, the intermediate words. Like, drodzy. <laughs> drodzy. Drodzy. Słuchacze. Słuchacze. Podcastu. Podcastu. Dawno temu w sztuce. Dawno temu sztuc, sztuczce. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, did, I, did I end it? <laughs> It's not the end. But especially because now I forget all the words. Like, I already... <laughs> okay. Niech sztuka będzie z wami. Niech sztuka będzie z wami. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> When I start my podcast in Italy, I will let you do the, this part in, in Italian. So, Okay, okay. I will do it in a moment because now it's time to switch the rules. A moment ago, you have greeted all listeners of the Dawno Temu w Sztuce podcast. And at the end, you said these famous words. Niech sztuka będzie z tobą. It means... May the art be with you. And this, of course, is associated with Star Wars. <laughs> mm, okay. It's like may the force with you. Yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what I mean. So what? Are we starting? Okay. Cari spettatori. Cari spettatori. <laughs> yeah, okay. Di c'era una volta. Di c'era una volta. Perfect. L'arte. L'arte. Podcast. Podcast. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is the, what is the um, complete phrase in English? Like, uh, dear listener from uh, Once Upon a Time. May the art be with you. Uh, okay. Che l'arte. Che l'arte. Sia con voi. Sia con voi. Okay. <laughs> you, you handle it. You handle yeah. it. We're better than me. Oh. That's so cool. Thank you very much, Gabriel. It was a pleasure to host you there on Dawno Temu w Sztuce. I think this conversation came out as I wished to. I hope you also felt good there. Thank you again and I wish you good luck in all your artistic activities. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the chance. Fingers crossed you will hear my name and you will see me in, uh, in Poland uh, really soon. It's like a menace now, but it's like I'm <laughs> coming. Fantastic. My dear listeners, my guest was Gabriel Latayana, an Italian painter who pays the tribute to the genius predecessors, but he does it in his own rebellious style. Agnieszka Kias was your host, critic with the heart for art. Bye, hear you soon. <laughs> okay, yes. We made it? Okay, okay. okay. We, did no, it. we did it. Okay, wait, 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 wait a little.
If you like what I'm doing and want to support the podcast dawno temu w sztuce, then buy me coffee on kodashfi.com forward slash dawno temu w sztuce. Link in the description. All coffees I'm going to spend on new audio equipment to make your podcast listening experience even better. Thank you for all the coffees and stay tuned for the updates. <laughs> Bye! Thank you very much. Jak się mówi do widzenia po włosku? Oliwia, przetłumacz. How to say goodbye in Italian. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao ragazzi. Ciao. <laughs>